So today I wrote a song for you, 'cause a day can get so long, and I know it's hard to make it through. And you say there's something wrong. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. I am Ryan Keyes, your host with Spirituality with a Spin, and that was Alex Murdoch singing. I wrote a song. We've been talking a lot about twin flames. We've been talking a lot about a different things. Yesterday was a little bit of a spiritual spanking in the sense that you are trying to understand the ins and outs of whether you are going to be with your twin flame or not, or if that twin flame is not really your twin and they are karmic soulmate. Now, I propose, as one of my wonderful followers. Spoke to me about. I've focused on the running, the chasing, the separation. I've focused on the space in between. I've focused on whether that person is real or false. Those are necessary things to talk about. But I want to back away now from the things that would equate you coming to me for help, or that would. Make you seem as if you have to go door to door looking for an alternate opinion, for advice to clarify whether this is the truth or not. I want to begin to work on you, tools for the twin, for you, because the twin flame relationship is about you. It's not about the other person. It's not about your twin. It's not about your love interest. It is about you. Come on, tell me it is not about you. Now, before I dive into this new awakening, this understanding of this conscious river that you have jumped into, this level of consciousness, becoming aware of self, becoming aware of the surroundings in which you live, being put on blast by that mirror, getting your life clear, understanding the depths to which you need to work on yourself. That's your twin. Tell me twice. That's your twin. That's your twin. Oh yes, that is your twin. They are telling you and showing you and bringing you to a place of understanding yourself so much better. Now, if that's their only job in this lifetime, damn, that's a pretty doggone good job because they just saved you from the abyss of ignorance's kiss. They just rescued you from scarcity. They just pulled you out of the muck of society. They told you to raise your head and look up. They told you to stick your chest out, walk proud. You are different. You are divine. You are not something that crawled out of the mud by God. Literally, look up right now. I am not something that walked out of the mud. I am a divine creation. I am a being of the sky. I am a light body being, and this that burns inside of me has been since the beginning. You are a garden of life right inside of you. You are Eden. You are Eden incarnate. You are the Genesis factor, my friend. You are perfect. So what? You need to lose twenty pounds. You are perfect. So what? You don't like the way your nose look. You are perfect. You may not be able to run a six-minute mile, but you are perfect. You might have deviations. You might have flaws, but so does a tree, and that tree is damn beautiful. You ever seen an oak tree that doesn't have a flaw? <sighs> My dog has a lot of flaws, but he is divine, and I love the hell out of him. You are the same. You are the same. You are worthy of love. Start seeing that self-worth. The twin relationship is kicking up your value index.、Mm -hmm. If you were a stock, you are going through the roof now. Oh yeah. How is that possible? How is this heartache something that can help me? How is this space in between something that can sizzle me and light me on fire? How is this? Going to change my life. How is this separation preparation to be something better? It is everything. It is your ticket. It is your elevation. It is your call to creation. It is your magical call to stand up and to be aware, to be conscious, 
No more ignorance. No more walking around with your head down feeling as if you don't belong. No more stress because of the things you can't change. We're going to cling to the law of attraction. We're going to cling to the law of deliberate creation. Now, when I take law of attraction and the law of deliberate creation, I marriage those two together like a twin flame, and I come up with the law of co-creation. We are co-creating. We are co-creating. You want to get close to your twin? You want to get close to the wind? You want to be in that union? Start to build a union around you. Don't sit there listless. Don't sit there longing for love. You bring love to your door. You go searching for love. You be out in love. You let love wash over you. You drown yourself in so much love that that twin will be drawn to you because you're on fire. Not because you're looking for something, trying to find something because you feel as you've lost it. You haven't lost anything. You haven't lost a dime. You haven't lost anything at all. Your twin is connected to you. Don't let the space lie to you. Don't let the running lie to you. They can't run. They're part of you. Now, will you be with them in the 3D world this time around? I do not know. I can't predict that. No one can. But I can guarantee your chances will double if you begin to let love rule your life, if you begin to become a conscious, sentient being that is seeking a higher awareness, if you are acting on your mission, your chances of that twin being brought back to you are going to double because you are person you've just person personified your vibration. You have just raised the level of your being so high, the world is at your feet. So we take the law of co-creation which is a combination of law of attraction, attracting like to like, what you put out there you get. You feel inadequate, you're going to be inadequate. You feel powerful, you will be powerful. You want to change life, start changing your life. You want your twin, start loving everyone. Law of deliberate creation. Everything that happens to me is deliberately because of me. If I go outside, and I haven't serviced my car and my car doesn't start, my car's not starting because I haven't taken care of my responsibilities. But here is the backup plan. The law of allowing. Allowing means to let something in, to let something have control, to let something go that you can't control, to understand that you are allowing something, letting something be what it is. Now you have to let everything be what it is. You have to let the things that you can't change not drive you crazy. Change what you can, which is generally yourself. Begin the change of conscious creation. So you've got the law of allowing. So if your twin needs to run, if your twin needs to go, let them go. If you feel this huge desire to go work in a different place, do it. Allow yourself to be you. Let me tell you one thing. I can't love you if you don't show who you is. If you don't show me the true you, I can't love you. I can only love you what you're going to show. If you show me something that's not you, I'm loving something that is false, of course. So begin to show me yourself. Look in the mirror and be proud of who you are. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you need to lose weight. It doesn't matter if you... Those are all superficial. You can do that once you start getting into this law. When you start seeing that you are a divine being, when you stop feeding into society's crap of shaping your existence, when you stop looking at commercials, when you stop losing yourself in TV, when you stop propagating fear by watching wars that are, are, are political, and I'm not saying bury your head in the sand, but I'm saying focus on what you can. Focus on that which will build. Focus on that which is going to make the world a better place. I'm going to do a video on the 11-11 sequencing and what that really means, 11-11. One of my wonderful followers asked me what that meant and I promised them I would do a video. So I'm going to do a video, but I'm putting out a challenge and you can hear it now. And when the video comes out on Sunday, it is going to talk about on November 11th, I am challenge you, challenging you, I am asking you, I am presenting to you that you take 10 minutes on that day to project, to be in the present, to thank this divine source for your existence, 
to say a mantra. I love myself, I accept myself, I forgive myself, I see myself, I allow people to see me, I allow people to know who I am. I am proud to be me because my creator has designed me and I am perfectly in the image of my creator. I am a high level being operating in a higher level of consciousness. I am here to co-create the new world, the shift. I am here to perpetuate a certain amount of dynamic energy. I have encountered my twin and my twin has encountered me and we will do what we need to do in this lifetime and I give it to the universe to allow. But I will love it and I will accept it. And that's what I need. Actually, let me do 11 minutes on November 11th. 11, 11, 11. I need 11 minutes of your time to plant a seed. To plant a seed based on need. To plant a seed based on being freed. Not a seed of greed. Not a seed of society. We have to make a stand. We have to change this world. We have to do something different. Every different. We have to do something different every day. I get, I'm like so overwhelmed and so caught up in this. I can barely focus right now. I can barely get the words out. Okay, Ryan, you need to bring it on down. Dial it down a notch. Let these people sit and satiate in this goodness for a second. The ability to have everything you want is at your fingertips. Are you willing to wake up and do the work? Or are you going to sit back and bellyache about it? The challenge is you. Are you ready for it? Because I'm standing right beside you. I will stand at that gate and I will go head to head with you. I will, I will stand by you. I will stand by you in the foxhole of life. I will help you. I will be there. I will, I'm going to, I don't just say it. I live it. So anybody that works with me, that has been working with me, shout out down below. Let people know what we're doing. Let people know what's changing. Let, let people know what's happening in this world. Let people know what kind of system that I'm talking about. Help other people. Bring up other people. Give a helping hand to those in need. You got to. So now let's talk about some tools that will help to alleviate this twin flame situation. Let's talk about some tools that will pull you out of the past and put you right here in the present. Number one tool is about raising your consciousness. Your twin has already started you on the path. We already covered the symptoms of the ascension being so synonymous to the twin, right? Now, triple that down. Your DNA is activating behind the scenes right now. Bruce Lipton, epigenetics, DNA activation, the Merkaba. Google those for a minute. There is scientific proof behind those, my friend. Your DNA is not mutating. It's turning on. It's coming online. It's giving you more. It is letting you have access to those unseen places in your brain, in your body. It is illuminating you. So there's a couple ways that you can raise your consciousness. I'm just going to go over a couple of them because they're very important in this process. Of, and it's a tool. These are tools to help you to help yourself because we need to really buckle down and work on this. I'm telling you, we do. We need to really start to become more operational, more um, flexible. So number one, uh, tool that I'm going to talk about is simplifying your life. You got to get rid of the clutter. Think of your body and your mind and your soul as a home and you got a little, you're a hoarder. You're hoarding. Everything that's about the past is holding you back. You ever watch that show about hoarders? And they walk in like, holy shit, what's going on in here? <laughs> that's, that's what your, your body's saying. No wonder your body is sick. No wonder your body is not living in line. No wonder you're uh, feeling run down. So you need to begin to cut that out. You need to uh, clear away the clutter. And that is about the law of deliberate creation, taking specific action, moving forward, even when you're afraid. You may be frustrated, you may be confused, but I'll tell you what, unless you search for clarity, you're not gonna be getting anything else. You're gonna stay confused, you're gonna stay frustrated, 
But I always look at it as being counterintuitive to what I need to do. If I want to be with someone that I love, I'm not going to sit thinking about them and pining about them and think about how far away they are and think about all the bad things that have happened and since they left me. I'm going to think about the wonderful things going on in my life because I want to get caught doing something good when they come around looking at me. I don't want them walking around feeling sorry for me. I want them to hear about me. I want them to see me doing my work. I want that telepathic connection to echo my mission across the ocean. Hey, I'm doing my job. I'm changing people's lives. I'm answering source. That'll get their attention. Not sitting in a dark room thinking, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Don't do that. Don't be your worst enemy. Retire that reptile brain. The lizard brain is done. Your body said there ain't no more room for lizard brain. So that DNA is coming online, it is activating. And the way you do is live deliberate, deliberately clean out your closet, right? Clear away the clutter. And you can use uplifting music. That's why I put music in the beginning of this because I believe music empowers and enlightens and uplifts you. It will get you feeling groovy. There is nothing that Bob Marley can't cure. I will tell you that. Mm-hmm. Be careful what you choose to listen to. There are some things you can, I mean, I'm not telling you to dictate your music, but if it is, if it will, if it will, if it will drive a, a, a cat crazy, don't listen to it. <laughs> if your dogs howl when they hear it, maybe that's not a good thing. The other big, big thing, your body is a machine. Your body is a car. Your body holds your heart, your mind, your soul, your emotional cortex. Your body is sick because it can't work properly. You need to get out there and exercise. I mean exercise, right? Don't just use your workout band and get your 10,000 steps in. I mean exercise, right? Get out there, do those things. Get involved. Do the yoga, right? Do it, do it, do it. And then meditation. We've talked about it many, many times. Being kind to yourself by meditating. If you want to travel, go travel. If you want to do something great for yourself, do it. Now, you know what I do in the car? And many of you have seen this on my other videos. I sing. Now, I'm not saying that I sing well, but I sing because I get involved. I feel it and I just let it rip. And I just, just belt out a tune because it feels good. Then think of it. You came from a garden. Get back to the garden if you want to feel good. Right? You hear me on that one? My Genesis people. You want to feel good. Go back. To the garden that's where you came from that's where you're gonna find your sustenance that's why I talk about in diet remember if it came out of the garden it's good for you think about it think about it uh-huh you got a lot of proof that nature is your friend I mean a tree makes it able for you to breathe right so be next to that tree be in nature Feel that grass. Get out there. Have a picnic in the park. Have fun. First and foremost, learn to have fun. Having fun like myself. I love my dog. I am spending time with my dog, taking him for a walk. Animals are a huge catalyst of getting into that conscious state of understanding. They will help you more than you can help yourself sometimes because they're more conscious than we are. They are living the law of attraction because they wag their tail and you go pet them. Hey, they're feeling love, so they project love and you, you succumb to that love and you walk up right there and you give them love, right? They're excited to see you. Then you become excited to see them. That's law of attraction in its base form. You know what I'm saying? The law of deliberate creation. They go sit by the door, you go open it so they can go to the bathroom. They're deliberately creating their ability to get outside by showing you what they need. Oh, yes. We're talking basics, baby. All right. Law of allowing. They don't care if you come home sad. They'll allow you to be sad, but they will lay next to you. And they will absorb that sadness from you. Right? They'll let you become present. And that's another way. Nothing beats being right here in the now. Focusing on your breath, focusing on right now, what the body's doing right now, feeling all your muscles, feeling all your tendons, feeling all of it working together. Like Eckhart Tolle says, when you're washing your hands and you're soaping up your hands, let that water feel on your hands for a second. 
What does that water feel like on your hands? What does that soap feel like? When you're tying your shoe, what does it feel like when you tighten that shoe around your foot? Take seconds to just sit there for a little satiation, to be here in the now. And like I said, you got two things that will help you immensely. Food is your fuel. Uh huh. Food is your fuel. Now, I'm not telling you you got to be vegan. I'm not telling you got to give up stuff. But if it's processed, it's just pulling you into that process. Uh huh. If it's got chemicals in it, guess what? They're not going to stay in it for long because they're going to go into you now. So, you may not believe in chemicals. You may not believe in additives like some people are against marijuana and all these other things. But guess what? I'm against chemicals in my food. <laughs> so what do you do? You get back to the garden. I just said it. Go to the garden. The garden is good. You eat from the garden. You increase your mental faculties. You increase your energy level. You increase your mind mindfulness. You're going to reduce your cholesterol, reduce the disease. When you reduce dis-ease, your body is like on Superman mode. And one thing that the twin flame is about that is very synonymous to raising your levels of consciousness, following your passion. This encounter with your twin flame should have showed you what type of passion you have, where your passion lies, right? And it doesn't matter if you die trying, because at least you tried, okay? So success will come knocking to your door as long as you get caught doing what you're doing. My acting coach, as I've said before, said you can't keep a good thing secret. No, you can't. So these are things on how to raise your consciousness. Raising your consciousness is extremely important. Raising your consciousness helps you to become more present in this place. Because there is no escape from you. Drugs, sex, alcohol, junk food is not going to get you from being you. And your life, like Buddha said, is a creation of your mind. Now, let me, let, let me just say that one more time. Drugs, sex, alcohol, McDonald's, Jack in the Box, Carl's Jr. That is not going to tell you what you are, who you are. Alcohol never told you who you are. Sex never told you who you are. It's not going to change who you are. You could go have sex with 10 people, but it doesn't change you. You're still the you that was there before. You could drink a bottle of alcohol. Is it going to make you a different person? No. What's going to make you a different person? Seeing yourself, accepting yourself, finding your true identity. Mm -hmm. When you start to go, who am I? Why am I here? When you answer those, you're breaking societies cuffs that chain society is wrapped around your leg to keep you from going too far well you just cut that chain and now you're going you're going for it you're going to tiny house that shit so when you consciously reduce your attachment to the material comforts the material goods to the things that are sold to you that will change you there's no magic pill there is no magic pill I have needs, I am not those needs. I have desires, I am not those desires. Right? How many of you would trade everything you own for the most wonderful, deep felt love that you could ever have to last the rest of your life? I would. Hell yes, I would. Money can't buy love. Money can't buy back time. Nope. Can't do it. So we're moving forward. We're getting things done. We are talking about some really interesting things here, right? And like I said, the biggest tool to get back to your twin, to cross this expanse, is to be that which ye seek. Like attracts like. Be the love that you want. Be the love that you seek. Number one, loving yourself leads directly to loving choices for you and for others. When you know thyself and you love thyself and you are true to the source and true to who you are, 
your consciousness begins to rev up. You begin to become a healer. You begin to become healthier, happier. And then you become a fountain of youth. You become a fountain of awakening. You become a lighthouse in the dark. And if your twin is in the dark, perhaps they will see that light. Perhaps your newfound positive self-esteem and your new ideologies and your new way of looking at life can make that distance a little smaller. But I guarantee you, if you do not learn to love yourself, if you do not seek loving yourself, if you do not wrap yourself up in a big ass blanket full of love, the twin is not going to work out. This is about coming together, full consciousness in effect. This is about a call from source. If you do not answer the call, if you do not increase your self-worth, if you do not increase your self-knowledge, if you do not begin to vibrationally radiate at a higher frequency, if you do not jump on that train that is passing you, you will be stuck there. Because you're going forward. We're not sitting in the stagnant pond. That's poison. We're putting the old image, the old perceptions, that past behind us. We are moving forward. That is the biggest tool to stop resisting. Right? I mean, after all, your body is 70% water. And like I just said, the only water you want to drink from is that which is flowing. Oh, oh that's heavy, baby. That is heavy. Who's drinking out of stagnant ponds? You show me one person. I'll show you some sick bellies. It is easy. As soon as you surrender to the flow, go with the flow. You know what I'm talking about. When you stop resisting and you start living consciously and you start living effortlessly and you start allowing and you start deliberately creating, life will take you with it. The universal source will guide you to where you need to be. You are 70% water. Do not allow it to go stagnant style. Don't stop the flow, baby. Don't get stuck where you're at. Don't get stuck in a rut. Water is effortless. It is graceful. It is beautiful. It is sustaining. That's why when you get to the ocean or you get to a body of water, you feel majesty. You feel majestic. That's right. And again, I will say, Create this life how you see it, how you want it, how you believe it. They used to say that, aim for the stars so that if you even land on the moon, the moon at least you're better than where you were. Right? Who are you? Who are you inside that story? Let me hear. So these are ways to wake up, to get to a place. This is just the first phase, baby. This is the first phase of getting the ways to get on your wake up agenda so that you can start to get empowered. We are no longer just going to persevere. We are going to embrace the power. We are going to take this moment by moment and own it. I'm not going to let you sit back in heartache, second guessing yourself. I'm not going to let you sit back with your belly hurting, your head down, tears in your eyes. I can't. It wouldn't be right. I am going to be your cheerleader. I'm going to tell you that you can, because I did. All right. Just uh, give me one second. Go with me on this real quick, if you have the ability to. If you don't, come back 29 minutes into this. I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to say a, an affirmation, a mantra, a short one, because I believe as power. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm asking you to do on November 11th, 1111, for 11 minutes. We need you. Seriously. Don't drop the ball. We need you to be there. To show up. This is the step in being something part of something bigger. This is where you can find power. 
and passion and draw that to you, which is supposed to be with you. So do me a favor, close your eyes. Dear grand designer, architect of everything, the source which has designed us, the divine which is inside of us. Every ancient text says, wherever two or more are gathered in agreement as touching what they agree upon is bound on heaven as it is in earth, as above, so below. And those of you that are listening with me right now, we are standing at a place of affirmation, of confirmation, of agreement. And we are asking through grace and through goodness and divine sufficiency that you open our eyes to see the path laid before us. Open our eyes so that we can see the truth. Open our ears so that we might hear the message that is meant for us. Open our ears so that we can hear that goodness that resounds in our life. And open our mouths so that we might speak the message in the mission so that we might move people and motivate those around us. Open those doors which should be open and close those doors which should be closed. Give us grace. Give us guidance. Allow us to be our best self. Protect us. Protect those that we love. Protect those that are around us. Give us a sense of peace so that it may permeate all around us. Let us operate in goodness and in grace so that we might share this with others. And we ask that you wake us up. We answer the conscious call. We come to source and we stand tall. We stand proud in firm acknowledgement. We agree. Now I appreciate your time. I appreciate everything that you've been saying. I appreciate all that you have commented on and the support. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe down below so that you know when things come out. I ask that you have a blessed day and I will see you on the other side.